I'm Drew Scanlon. I'm exploring the world through the lens of games, and I'm doing it with the support of people like you on Patreon. Help us out at patreon.com slash clothmap. To my American mind, Cuba is practically synonymous with baseball. The small country of 11 million people has produced numerous professional players who have become household names across the embargo lines in America. Cuba and baseball are so closely linked, the mere sight of soccer fields and surveillance photos was enough to point to foreign involvement during the Cuban Missile Crisis. In the words of Henry Kissinger, Cubans play baseball, Russians play soccer. What makes Cuba's baseball heart tick? And is sport truly separable from politics? To find out, we spoke with Roberto, a former principal of a sports training school. We met at Sports City in Havana, a popular and massive sporting facility that's open to the public. Here in Cuba, everybody likes sports. It is difficult to know a person that doesn't like sport. The practice of sport is good for health, but it's good to, to enjoy ourselves, to get together, to have a time together. To, to put down the... <laughs> Most of the time is to do what you want to do. We have baseball as national sport. Since we are a child, we watch, in the, the television, we watch baseball. As a child, where would you play? Here, sometimes, I'm there, I'm there, any place. Including at the street, too. On the street, too? Yeah. Do children play baseball in school? No, no, not baseball. Baseball needs uh, more time, more resources, more space, and our school, no, no every school has uh, space to that. In, in every province, we have an academy, baseball academy. Oh, really? These teams have games to determine who is going to be in the national team. And you represent Cuba out of here. Olympic Games, uh, Central American Games, Pan American Games, the World Championship, and everybody is waiting who is going to be the, the first base, who is going to be the shortstop, who is going, everybody's looking that. In America, we have players from Cuba. Um, how do they go from Cuba? Wow, to that's, that's very, very, very interesting. Yeah? It is not easy because they have to put away the Cuban nationality in order to play there. If you continue being a Cuban man, you can know uh, playing major leagues. Some of them do it because they need to prove themselves. And when you are in other leagues like Panama, Japan, Korea, Italy, they are not strong leagues. You learn nothing. You go to, to teach, not to learn. But when you go there, you're going to learn. And you are going to show that you are good, that you can be the best too. And, and they can't come back. We have to, no, they can't come back because if they uh, return back, they cannot continue playing there. Yeah. Uh, some people there are making great efforts to eliminate that problem. They were here, here, where you are standing, they were here. That's a politics. Sports is not a thing to blend it with the politics. Uh, baseball is sport. And nobody thinking politics and nothing, only baseball. Everybody relax on Sunday, participate with friends, with family, in sports, in, in games social games included. Someone like to play baseball. Some people like to play domino. That's Cuban life. We can be playing domino all the night and then in the morning go to work. We can do it. Uh, not with him because he need to drink to play domino. No, it's not <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah. 
Okay, of course you want to bet with me. <laughs> Dominoes, a Cuban staple, and as I would soon learn, a seemingly simple game that is deep with strategy. You okay. have to lose as much number as you have. Okay. And if you can't play, you pick one. No, 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 no. no, no. no. The pass. Play, the pass. Yeah. Okay. When is the round over? Whoa. When the first person who wins gets that. rid of all their dominoes. Yes. When you're deciding which one to play, how do you decide? I try to lose as much points as I can, and then I try not to lose all the numbers. So I can stay always without passing. Okay. In other words, you want to get rid of as many dots as you can, but also try to leave a variety of numbers in your hand so you don't get shut out. Playing with a teammate across the table adds another dimension. How do you strategize with your teammate? Can you talk about your hand? No. no. Okay. You just have to see the way that the other one is playing, and then from there, you have to guess what is the strategy no. that no. No. both are going to do. No. So the first domino you play is kind of a signal to your teammate. Yes. This is probably what I have the most. So if you have all the fours, it's good because no one else has them. Okay. There are 10 of all the numbers. So they count, so they can know what are the pieces that they have left. If you get good enough, you can start to know what other people have. Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> Experts by now, Joey and I gave it our best shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and each dot counts as a point, so you want to go like, get rid of the high spec. Okay. The theme of the night was knock knock, the sound of our knuckles on the table signifying that we didn't have any playable dominoes. Knock knock. Knock knock. Knock knock. Knock knock. Not yet. Knock. So I think I'm I think I'm getting it. Like you want if you have a lot of one number, you want to hold them till the late game and then screw the other team. There was a point they didn't have any twos and I had like a six and a two and I could have played the six and blocked them from playing any more twos. And then hope that Joey had the twos. All right, I think I'm getting it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Still, we were rookies and got smoked. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You guys corner the fours and the nines. I'm sorry, my friend. What have you? Despite our poor performance, we had a good time. But it's easy to have fun in a place like Cuba where everybody is welcoming. Back at Sports City, a group of coworkers was even kind enough to let the American have an at bat. I still remember all my little league base running strategy. So this this appears to be just a group of friends. They're not. This is not a team or anything. Uh, so I just, I fit right in. You can hear what you want, but this is the the form we live. As you see, nobody get angry because of nothing. Only play, enjoy. Even when someone like me comes and interrupts their games. You, you, you participate as a Cuban family. No? Uh, let me play, okay? Uh, hey, you want to pitch? Come here. That's Cuban. That's Cuban people, always. Running around those bases and sitting around that table felt so familiar. The feelings of competition and teamwork that emerge from games are practically a language unto themselves. And despite the differences between us, it's a language we all speak. This is the second of Cloth Maps videos from Cuba. Previously, we spoke to the administrators of Havana's citywide bootstrapped gaming network. Later, we'll investigate Cuba's involvement in another Cloth Map subject, the Chernobyl disaster. And if you're subscribed on Patreon, look forward to an exclusive travelogue video showing behind the scenes of our trip to Cuba. If you like this video, or any of our other ones, consider supporting us on Patreon. Regular folks just like you contribute a few bucks a month to keep CloughMap going. Their support helps pay for flights, 
lodging, guides, translators, camera operators, editors, music licensing, and more. If you think learning about the world and bringing us all closer together is important, we'd love to have you with us.